In this screencast, we will take a look at the process by which we determine whether or not a controller should be direct or reverse acting. The controller action is a very important aspect of properly integrating a controller into a control scheme. If the controller action is selected incorrectly, regardless of the quality of the tuning that has been done, the process will not respond correctly to a change in either the set point or the presence of a disturbance. What will happen is that your controller will act the opposite of the way you want it to. So to show this, we're going to use an example of a heat exchanger where we are trying to cool a process fluid by the use of cooling water. So we're going to control the temperature of the process fluid by the flow rate of cooling water as indicated by the diagram. So to think about what the role of the controller is, we're going to zoom in and just look at what the block diagram for the controller aspect is. So here will be our controller. And what will come into the controller is the error, in other words, the difference between the set point and the actual measured value. And this error is measured typically in either units such as transmitter output or in milliamps. And what comes out of this is a signal in percent controller output, which then goes to the valve. So basically, the percent controller output gives some indication about how we want the valve to operate, whether it be fully open, fully closed, or somewhere in the middle. So controller action can be reverse acting or direct acting. For a direct acting controller, what it means is as the value of the measured variable goes up, the necessary signal, in other words, the percent controller output that the controller will make, will go up, as the name direct acting indicates. And the other type of controller action is reverse acting. And unsurprisingly, what that represents this is as the measured variable goes up, the percent controller output goes down. By convention, the gain for a direct acting controller is less than zero, and the gain for a reverse acting controller is greater than zero, which at first glance uh, seems a bit counterintuitive because direct acting loss is a negative sign of the controller. These signs are solely an issue of sign convention, most notably the sign convention that we give valves. Recall that fail closed valves take a positive sign and fail open valves take a negative sign, which is relatively arbitrary. The reason why those signs were selected is because fail closed valves tend to be more commonplace in chemical processes. Generally, although not always, a majority of controllers found in practice are reverse acting, which is also nice in the fact that it gets the positive sign. But let's do the analysis for this system. And to do that, there are two possible methods we can use. The first method is to evaluate a change in the measured variable. For our heat exchanger, the value we are measuring here is the temperature of the process fluid. If the fluid temperature goes up, in other words, the process fluid temperature is too high, what that means is the fact that we are going to want to increase the cooling water flow rate. If we want to increase the cooling water flow rate, we're going to want to open the valve more. We need to figure out whether or not a opening of the valve causes an increase or a decrease in the controller output, the signal of the controller. And to do that, we need to figure out if the valve fails open or if it fails closed. If we revisit our system here, what we see is the fact that as if power goes out to this process, as a safety precaution, we're definitely going to want the cooling water to still be flowing through the heat exchanger in the case that there's warm fluid that is still stuck in the heat exchanger or something related to that. Because of that, we are going to want our valve to fail open. So with a fail open valve, we think about this where the valve here is fully closed and the valve here is fully open. When the power is out or we lose electricity, we want this to default fault to fail open. It will, in other words, will have no signal. So therefore here, open will represent 0% controller output. Similarly, for the valve we fully close, we would want the system to be at 100% controller output. So in the case of our 
cooling water example, we would want to go from more closed to more open. And this change from more closed to more open leads to a decrease in the percent controller output. Thus, as we have an increase in the value of the measured variable, that's going to require a decrease in the percent controller output. So what that means here is the fact that our final decision here would be to have a reverse acting controller. The second method we can use is we can do a signs analysis. The signs analysis can get a little tricky if we are not dealing with feedback only systems, so for cascades, feed forward systems, this can become a little trickier mean that method one, which can be used for all situations cleanly, would be your better choice. But method two can be done a little bit quicker in our analysis. So we're interested in the sign of two things. The first is the sign of the valve gain, and the second is the sign of the process gain. So what we do here in this method is we multiply the signs of the valve gain, the process gain. If this multiplication leads to a positive, then the controller will be reverse acting. And similarly, if the signs multiplied together are negative, we would select a direct acting controller. So if we evaluate this for our process, the valve gain here, it is a fail open valve. So by convention, fail open valves have a minus sign. For our process gain, remember that the gain of a process is the delta output over delta input. Here, the value, the output variable, the variable we're trying to measure here, is the temperature of the process fluid. We are trying to adjust that by altering the flow rate of the cooling water. So what we see here is, is if I increase the flow rate of the cooling water, that is going to cause a decrease in the temperature of the process fluid. Therefore, the process gain is negative. So if I use this methodology, I'd multiply negative by negative, and that would get me a positive value, which again would predict a reverse acting controller, the exact same as we ended up with when we used the previous method. So in this screencast, we analyzed the importance of controller action and how to determine the controller action for a chemical process that is undergoing feedback control. But as noted earlier, this can be extended to other control schemes that are more complicated, such as cascade, feedback, feedforward, etc.